Okay, everybody, this is Music on Fire 10. I'm back with something a little bit different today. This is my second book review, and it's a book that I've been reading for a couple weeks now because it's very, very deep that I enjoyed a lot. It's called The Diary of a Lost Girl, and it's written by Sudanese authoress Kolobov. I just actually discovered this woman um, doing a project for Arabic classes, as you know, some of you know, may know. I'm an Arabic minor, and the project was to um, write a, I think it was, 1200 word paper about an Arabic figure. And so I chose a literary figure because I love writing. But I wanted to focus on someone from Sudan because I know that people in Sudan speak Arabic and that's not often talked about. So I wanted to bring to light, you know, Sudanese authors because I wanted to start reading some of their things and especially if the person, a woman, I was looking for a woman specifically because I wanted to see what her story was about. So in reading this, I was in for a really good treat because Cola Booth has a wonderful story that I believe is important for everyone to know. But it is pretty controversial, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend the book to any everyone. That being said, let me get into it. So Cola Booth was born in Sudan. Her birth name was Naima bint El Harith, and she was born to an Egyptian father and a Somalian mother. Now, to kind of speed ahead in the story, um, one of the saddest things that I've ever read about, she was seven years old and in the house when her parents were murdered outside in the backyard and she heard everything and stayed with their bodies the entire night of their death. That is something horrendous and it isn't something that's often talked about. Like um, when I was in Egypt last year, I heard a lot about the atrocities that happened in Palestine. Um, from the Israeli side, but people did not speak about the atrocities that went on in Sudan. And I heard about them often because I'm very Afrocentric and I like researching about what's going on in Africa because I plan to have practice medicine there someday. And so reading about her was natural. I wanted to know what the story of a Sudanese person was. And she tells that story. She takes no prisoners. She's very blunt. She's very open. I really like the way she writes, personally. So she tells that part, and from there she goes on to talk about um, her grandmother giving her away and going to live with another man in England, another family in England, and then she comes to the United States. So that's where she lives today, and she talks about her black American family here and how they shaped and molded her. Um, it's very nice. I love the way she describes her family. She's a very family-oriented person, and that, I believe, is just wonderful. But she is very controversial. I don't necessarily believe in everything that she says. There are a couple of things that I don't, you know, agree with. But she is the type of person that says, you know what, you don't have to love me. You don't have to agree with everything that I say. But this is my opinion. And I know everyone has a right to their opinion. And the reason that I like this book so much, well, another reason, <laughs> is that she has an opinion. It is unapologetic, even though many years, you know, it's always been, not always been, but, um, a black woman's opinion, especially an African woman's opinion, an African woman's opinion is not always accepted or brought to the light. And she is changing that. She, this is not the only book she's written, so she's written several books of this caliber. They're very controversial. Um, they've been put on lists where, you know, people aren't allowed to have them in their stores. She said that many black Americans in the United States did not hold her book in her store and discouraged people from reading it. Those are the type of people that I like to read about. So. <laughs> That's why I read her book. And so um, I just wanted to get into it a little bit. One of the quotes she has was, A black woman in America has very few identities to choose from. And then she goes on to describe them. And they're not very good. And so that's one thing that I do not agree with her about. Because I know myself as a black American woman, and or a black woman, period. Well, she says black woman in America. Um, and a woman who teaches black children, tutors black children, a woman who is planning to go to medical school to assist all types of children um, as a pediatrician, um, a sister, daughter, friend to many. I know that I have very many identities and I feel to be honest that she does as well. She's a mother, she's a lover, a wife, she's an authoress, um, she's an activist, She's so many things. Like, there's actually no names for her because just of the way that she writes. 
there are many um, things in the book that are very sad. Um, there is a rape scene. There is um, a lot of references to sex. So if you're not comfortable with that, I wouldn't suggest you read it. Um, but if you are at all interested in the Sudanese cause and what's going on in Sudan and hearing a Sudanese woman's story, then I do suggest you read it. But don't say it didn't warn you. It's a very heavy book. Um, there are many sad parts in it. But I have enjoyed it and I do plan to read all of her other books as well. So you have a fan, Cola. She's one of my new favorite authors by far. And she talks a lot about other people who have um, influenced her, such as Gloria Naylor, another one of my favorite authors. She talks about Nawala Sadawi, who's an Egyptian authoress. Um, she talks about many, many people. One thing that she brought up that at first, when I was reading it, I was like, I don't really like that term. She used the term hip hop holocaust. And I was kind of, because I really love hip hop. And I'm always the one trying to stand up for the, you know, hip hop cause and the whole when people were saying hip hop is dead. I didn't believe it. But I do. <laughs> I'm starting to see some things in hip hop that I don't like, which of course this video is not necessarily about that. But I don't like the way that many of the artists are acting. I don't like it when they beef, you know, like fight each other about stuff because I believe it's very petty and someone usually ends up getting hurt. And I especially don't like it when they make statements. I had a video about this last night about the way people look, saying, oh, I don't like dark-skinned women. Because, to me, that is self-destructive for many reasons. Number one, you're a black person. It's a crazy thing to say. But secondly, those are your fans. <laughs> so if you're going to stand up and in one breath say, I think all my fans are buying my albums and, you know, doing this and that and listening to my CDs, blah, 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 and I thank God, you cannot turn around and say something so destructive because... And then expect people to buy your albums because, to me, that wouldn't work. So I can kind of see, I don't believe that's what she meant by Hip Hop Holocaust, but I can kind of see, that's how I take it. <laughs> you know, like, it's really self-destructive because you aren't thinking about the people that you are affecting with your words. As in the past, I felt that Hip Hop was more or less, I'm standing up for what I believe in, youth, this is what you should do too. Now it's more or less, I have money, you don't, I'm better than you. But you wouldn't have money if someone wasn't buying your albums, would you? That's how I think of it. And so, another quote, I think this is probably the quote I'm going to leave you with, is, as I've told you from day one, this is something she dedicated to her sons, which I find very beautiful. The meaning of life is that your deeds outlive you. And that, to me, is something that everyone should take heed to. Um, what we do every day, how we go about carrying ourselves, in the end, when you're gone, your money will be left behind because you can't take money with you. You can't take things with you. But what she did as a writer, the things she says about Sudan, the things she says about self-hatred and things like that, those will outlive her. The truth will outlive her. There are many rumors, awful rumors about Kola Booth, but she knows what the truth is. And I feel like she speaks the truth in so many different parts of her book. Now, like I said, I don't agree with everything she said, but I do believe that she has a story and I want to read it because Sudan has been kept silent for far too long. People do not talk about the atrocities that go on in Sudan and other parts of Africa as they do in other parts of the world. And frankly, I'm tired of it. So hopefully I'm going to get on the internet now and look up something about the referendum that's going on in southern Sudan because the polls hopefully will be done today. I've been waiting all week to find out what the verdict is because I want to do a video about that as well. So if you're at all interested in things concerning southern Sudan or any other parts of Africa, I would suggest Kola Booth as an author or, you know, if you have any other suggestions for me, let me know as well because I'm always looking for ways to find out things, more things about Africa. So hope this helped you out, gave you a little bit more knowledge. Do suggest the book um, it's a good one. It's very heavy, as I said. But go for it and stay cool. 2011. See you later.